All right, so today we are flying DJI's brand new Mini 3 Pro. We're gonna be talking about the things I like about it, the things I don't like about it, and also compare it to some of the competition. This one's made by Altel, and you know, this has actually been out for a little while, and on paper at least, they're very similarly spec, so I'm actually curious to see how this compares against the Mini 3 Pro. And also, thank you to our sponsor, Licked. Because of them, we get to use these awesome songs in our video without getting a copyright strike. This is not a replacement to the Mini 2. So if you're looking for an ultra low cost drone that flies good, Mini 2 is still gonna be the way to go. This has features that are actually more in line with like an Air 2 or Air 2S, so I love that. More capability, smaller drone, but the price does reflect that. Now I've actually been flying this thing for over a month now. Reason why I haven't been able to talk about it is because when DJI lets us test these, they give us a non-disclosure agreement that we have to sign and we have to basically keep our mouth shut until basically right when I post this video. As much as I wanted to talk about it, DJI has this back room that's kind of like you know old school casinos where if you do something that's frowned upon they take you back there and the things that DJI do in their back room like it's it's unspeakable so I know you guys don't really do too much of like the consumer drone stuff because if it can't carry a red then no, you guys we, seem to not really be that interested in it but we have plenty of Mavics we, we use these for scout drones yeah we call them canaries oh wow Ooh, the mini the ultralight does it charge via the USB-C you can yeah so if you want to travel without a charger you don't have to the weight is kind of insane isn't it's, it it feels insanely light these props have like reasonable pitch on them Oh, it's got that new drone smell. <laughs> Look at that guy. It looks extra small in, in your my hand. hand. <laughs> yeah. One thing that's kind of cool is as you're unfolding it, you yeah. know how there's like a certain order you usually have to unfold it yes. in? This yes. one doesn't really matter. Exactly. So, which is okay. nice, so. Yeah, because I would have broken it. <laughs> what is, what? Do you know how hard it was to try to put the iPhone on the thing? Like, it was just yeah. Like, that's yeah. sick, but look at this. You can unscrew one blade and just replace that one. Pop on another. Yeah, that's nice. That smart controller is rad though. The screen is quite nice. It is. Yeah, it's not bad. The, the right? viewing, like, look at the viewing angles on it. Yeah. yeah. Talk about the camera though. What do we have here? It's not quite a one inch sensor, but it's one over 1.3. Okay. So it's pretty close. F1.7? Yeah, that's solid. Yeah, with almost a one inch sensor. I imagine it's gotta be decent. Yeah, it's gotta be decent. Some uh, updates to design here. Oh my gosh. I literally just dropped, it's just brand new. I was totally intentional, uh, durability test, haha. <laughs> Doing this because that's my job. Definitely some design updates here, like check out where the gimbal kind of sits. Whoa, Yeah, no, that's new. That's cool, right? Like they how they have this clearance. Look, I think you get like 20 degrees. Yeah, because as soon as you see like that, this, yeah. but this it is great because you just have that little cutout right like there. There, yeah. Like, I like that you can go at a faster speed and not worry about the camera dipping. You know, if yeah. you go to sport mode, you reach a certain speed, sometimes you'll see that like knockdown. And we got more stuff for this flight more kit plus okay so three battery charger the original one you have i think is actually has less sensor but... no sides i'll tell you that for right, right yeah now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this one doesn't have sides either so you still yeah. have to be careful, be careful yeah. yeah i'm actually kind of curious on how well it's going to do here because it's pretty windy here right now if it is able to handle it great we're you know if it isn't on the other side of that fence there's coyotes and oh <laughs> it goes over there <laughs> you have nothing to worry about uh, i've seen your commercials uh. you're fine <laughs> Hey, feeling pretty confident with that. I was like, do you know how to fly drones? You're like, kinda, you're pretty uh, good. Yeah, I'm all right. What was those sensors telling you? Hey, there's a tree right there. <laughs> it's like playing Frogger. It's like a little baby drone, but it's amazing. By the, if you need a babysitter, let me know, I'll keep it. <laughs> <laughs> For me, one of the big things about the weight is that it doesn't make nearly as much noise. The Phantom, man, like when it, when it would come down, it was like, Rawr. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is shockingly stable. What's the flight time like? It says 30 minutes with 85% left. If so. it gets 30 minutes, that's baffling. Do you tracking at all or? Um, let's see. Get out oh. here, I love it. They give you a tutorial right in the thing. That's what I like about DJI. Like, like they'll, they'll give you a tutorial as you're playing with it and you're like, I don't know how to do this, but wait, that's yeah. how you do it. I made a drone video of me proposing to my wife. I told her we were gonna start a travel blog and I was like, oh, let's go to the beach. Put the drone up and it just filmed me proposing. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. I had it stationary because I didn't want- just Right as you like get down on a knees, just yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are you doing down on your knee and why'd your drone crash? I, <laughs> man, this screen is handy though, huh? It's pretty bright here. Yeah. You can still see it actually. That's actually not bad. If you put it directly in the sun, yeah, it's a little bit reflective. Nope. If you angle it right, you can still see it. To see it in daylight, you want it to be like about a thousand nits and this is how many nits it is. 
I should have done my research. The camera quality is pretty impressive so far. One of the weaknesses of this is that it doesn't have 10 bit. Like this is just fun. Like I'm not gonna be doing anything crazy other than making like a, like a family video with this. Do you usually do 4K 24 or 30? I do 4K 24. I, 4K I, I don't 24. mess with 30 frames. I do like messing with 60 frames though. But first impressions? I like. It feels very plasticky. Um, yeah, that would be the only complaint, but I'm sure that that's obviously how it's got to be to make something this light. It feels almost cheap, but then you see it fly and like the, the stabilization really caught me off guard. Yeah, I mean, DJI flight controllers have always been the best, so. Overall? Yeah. I'm an easy sell, but I, I'd take one. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not going to bust the window? Oh! Right. This makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> My buddy designed this thing. It's like fully 3D printed. And basically you take a bike, like an air pump for a bike, and you just plug it in. So like if your drone gets stuck in a palm tree, you just like shoot this line over the branch and then like pull on both sides and shake your drone out of the tree. <laughs> oh! <laughs> this thing is Dude, that thing's <laughs> awesome. Link in description. <laughs> I gotta say it's so much fun being able to edit this drone footage to this music and of course that is thanks to our sponsor Licked. What exactly is Licked? Licked is a site where you get to use labeled music for your videos so they suck less. So that's why we're here at Coachella so actually we can see them in person. Hey Coachella! So who are some of the artists that you can license through Licked? Let's start with Flume. Want to know what's even more jam-packed than Coachella? The million plus tracks to choose from. Lick's mission is to sign all labels, adding more options to people like us. So, who's playing now? Duke Dumont. Duke Dumont. Duke, um, can you turn that beat up a little bit? You individually license a song per video. It's a flat rate that's priced to work with your channel size. And now we get to use this music without getting demonetized. Party on. Green light. All right, I'm already starting to feel a hangover. Let's chill with some Joji. It's pretty cool, you know, if you want to try it and make your things actually seem cool and not generic like some high school video. You know what you really want to and actually seem like you don't live at your mom's anymore? Get 50% off your first chart track and 60 days free stock music using the link below. Don't be a sad ice cream, get licked. Oh, oh. That gives you an idea of how windy it is here. That's not the motors, that's just the wind. You know, like those toys that you hold in the wind and they spin. Okay, these are some strong gusts. If this can handle it, I'll be pretty impressed. Well, the Mavic Mini 2 is definitely way more powerful than the 1, but this seems like even stronger, so. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, so it was struggling for a bit because it didn't have GPS lock before I took off, so that's why I kind of shifted around. But now it's got its GPS lock and it's holding and then i still have plenty of power to go back oh that's good that's good because the wind's coming from that direction the original mavic mini would be blown away this way and then if it went too far that way you wouldn't be able to bring it back oh man these are strong gusts of wind battery air message came up probably because we're just drawing way too much current which is totally understandable but man i'll tell you right now i'm impressed that it can fly into these winds at that speed. I like that it's not noisy and it's compact, so it's not gonna take up so much room when we go places. <laughs> now this also does have HDR and it automatically applies it up to 30 frames per second. You can go to like 48 frames per second and it automatically kills it. Now I do like the HDR. The images tend to come out with more dynamic range, but I do wish there was an option to turn it off for when it turns into low light because it does seem to blend and mesh some of the frames together even when my shutter speed is set correctly and i know that it's hdr because as soon as i pop it into 48 frames per second i force that hdr to turn off and my image looks fine so for now just popping it to 48 frames per second is a decent workaround but i would like to see a firmware update where i can just manually turn it off now one thing that we don't get out of here that the air 2s has is 10 bit log which is super flat color profile and tons of data in the color with that 10 bit. This is gonna be 8 bit with D Cinelike, so not as flat as log, but D Cinelike is super easy to grade. Usually you just have to bump the saturation, contrast, you're pretty much there. But it does also give you a lot more dynamic range and control in the color grade. So if you don't mind doing some light color grading, I would definitely recommend doing so. Now on the right here is another wheel for zoom. It is a digital zoom, so it's essentially just kind of cropping into the sensors. But if I rock that, so this is around 1.5 right here, I probably wouldn't really go 
much past this. Once I get into the 2X territory, you definitely see it get soft. Also check this out. We can go vertical with the camera, which is pretty cool. Haven't been able to do this since I think the original Mavic Pro. Right now there's no active track features available in portrait mode, but they did say that they are exploring that for a possible feature firmware update. And as of right now, I am still testing an early firmware version. So I always like to do updates and a pin a comment with any updates I see going forward. So things might change. Make sure you go check that down below. All right, now let's go into pricing for this Mini 3 Pro. It is $759 for the basic package. So this with the standard controller, which doesn't have the screen built in. It's the same one that comes with like uh, Air 2. Now, if you already have one of those controllers, you could just get the aircraft itself for $669. But then if you want it with this controller, then it comes out to $909, which honestly, I was expecting more because these controllers, the smart controllers or the pro controllers that come with the screen built in, they've always been expensive. So if I combine everything I have, including the fly more kit and everything, it's still less than the RC Pro, which is almost $1,200 just for that controller. But if you're trying to get the package, I would say definitely spend the extra 150 bucks to get this screen built in. It just makes life so much easier when you don't have to hook up your phone and do all this stuff and your phone's almost dead. You get a phone call during your flight and stops everything and uh, it's a mess. Now that I have a dozen flights on here, I think one of my favorite things is the fact that there's this cutout here. Like this is a perfect example. I could look up while still moving forward. Like how cool is that? All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go into sport mode now and just let it rip this way. So yeah, around 36 miles per hour. And this is also the first mini to have internal storage. It's not much, it's 1.3 gigabytes. So definitely not a whole day of shooting. But if you get out somewhere and you're like, crap, I forgot my micro SD card, at least you could get a few shots. In terms of like adjusting parameters, you know, I changed mine over to Imperial. For whatever reason here, we don't use the metric system. Why do we use feet? It's like a king's know. foot or something. Yeah, right? and we actually got away from the king. So I don't know why we're using the Imperial Yeah, it's, 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 it's awful. All right, here I go again, going about 35 miles per hour. And man, my angle on this is going 33 degrees upwards while going full speed. Love it when there's features like this because this isn't just some like gimmicky little trick. This is actually going to improve the types of shots I can get. So we definitely need this kind of design on like all drones going forward now. So spec sheet says we should be getting about 30 minutes of battery life when it's in a hover like this in a windless place, of course, or 34 minutes if you're going at a decent speed. You actually get better battery life if you're moving. And it's kind of designed to be moving forward because when it's in a hover like that, it's kind of tilted up a little bit. But if I move forward, it straightens out. Another possibility is that when it's trying to hover, it's flying over turbulent air, so it has to work harder to stay above it. There is a extended battery option, which is gonna give you more flight time. It is going to raise the weight of the drone over the 249 grams. Now, the one other downside of running this bigger battery is that it reduces your max service ceiling. So basically, if you're gonna go climb a mountain and go to a super high altitude, there's like a max height you're supposed to really take off from. Now, with the standard battery, it's 4,000 meters, but with this bigger battery, since it's heavier, it goes down to 3,000 meters. That is one benefit of the Air 2 is that that has a max service ceiling of 5,000 meters. So on paper, this is the plus battery. This has 47 minutes of max flight time. Now, of course, you're never really going to get that because that's in perfect conditions. And also it starts to beep at you pretty early on to say, hey, my battery is almost dead. You should be responsible and bring me back now. And that's usually when I try to bring it back sometimes. <laughs> but in general, I was roughly getting about 33 to 34 minutes in real world flights before it even started beeping at me and that's a pretty long time i also thought this thing was clever so if i want to charge three at once it's a serial charger so it does one at a time until they're all full and you just plug in a usb c there but i just realized that this out actually works even if it's not plugged in so let's say you're done flying you don't need these batteries anymore you forgot to charge a couple of your accessories you're trying to top off your action cameras and it essentially takes your unused drone batteries and turns it into a power bank oh we got carrie walking the dogs i'm going to try out some of the smart features so this is spotlight which is one of my favorites because I can just move the drone and it's going to compose the shots. Now older versions you have to keep the subject in the center which was not that fun if you're trying to get kind of creative but here I'm going to put Carrie on the top left and let's do a little fly away. So that's spotlight where it's literally just composing the shot for you. Let's do a helix. Always have line of sight. You need to see the drone and make sure that it's not going to crash into a tree especially a move like this where you don't have sideways sensors. And you also have to make sure that you're not flying over people, especially non-participants. It's gonna do a nice big reveal. 
Easy. Man, these Mavics come with so many smart features that it's impossible to go over all of them in this video. Oh, oh, oh Jesus. But the one I'm trying out now is the time lapse. I basically just say, fly in this direction. And right now it's taking like a panoramic photo. So the gimbal is just going around getting photos from all the different angles and stitches it together. And then there's even a crazier one called Sphere where it takes photos in every direction and it kind of gives you this global image. So a lot of little features in here to play with. You'll never get through it all. All right, now when it comes to drones, who are the competitors? Obviously DJI is massive. Massive. And I'll tell is actually someone that's been on my radar for a little while and also Skydio I actually like theirs because they give you a beacon that you can put in your pocket and you could ride a bike And it'll chase you and it has excellent obstacle avoidance Now the camera specs are very similar on both of these big sensors fast lens and we have obstacle avoidance sensors on the front Bottom as well as the back, but what's interesting is that's where you would expect the back sensors But with DJI you don't have them back here anymore They're up here kind of facing backwards which actually kind of makes sense because if you're flying backwards you get more clearance this way and also if you have the sensors down here they said that sometimes the propellers can disrupt it so it makes sense now if you want ND filters on here Freewell makes them that can kind of hook over and stays on that way but the mini is just like a lot of their other drones where it just rotates and snaps off like that you can put an ND filter on there DJI is making some filters for this but me personally I haven't loved the quality out of DJI's filters I often notice like this purple vignetting that discolors the edges I have to try out more filters to see which ones are the cleanest all right let's see here it's pretty windy the picture looks pretty good huh and this is straight out of camera color and picture at 4k 24 i will say it flies good but i just don't feel like i have as much authority in the wind i will say the mini 3 pro has been spoiling me because it can tilt up and here i'm just like oh wait i can't tilt up any further see with the mavic i just go all the way up and even past the tree it's funny how fast you get used to new things and then you're spoiled <laughs> this controller itself feels like it could use a design update. I do kind of like the user interface of where all those camera controls are right there. The thing I'm not a fan of is if I want to go in and turn on either HDR or log color, I can't in pro mode. Pro mode basically is where I'm manually adjusting my exposure and white balance so i actually have to put it on auto and i would say if i'm shooting log it's usually because i want more control over the camera so it's kind of weird that you have to let go of manual exposure honestly i'm just not too impressed with this right now and i think that's because i just tested the mini 3 pro which has 4k 60 when this has 4k 30 but i do like that Autel is doing new things they released this months ago and it has you know good camera on there sensors in the front bottom and back and they even have drones that are 8k and stuff so i'm definitely going to keep them on the radar so the mini 2 used to have an operating temperature of zero degrees celsius to 40 degrees celsius but now we have minus 10 to 40 so if you live in a cold place this will be beneficial we also have o3 transmission on here so 12 kilometers max of range they also give us a few more details so in a heavy environment it's 0.5 to 3 kilometers or 3 to 7 in a suburb now having the 4k 60 slow-mo on here is nice there is also full hd 1080p at 120 frames per second you cannot shoot that in D cine like so you're gonna have slightly less control over your color grading and dynamic range so let's wrap this up with my favorite things and least favorite things and I would say my top favorite thing on here is that I can tilt up now like I didn't think I wanted to tilt up very often but now that I can I'm doing it all the time also having sensors on here is great I mean sensors are never perfect so you should never rely on them but having them on the front I think is a pretty big deal because if anything happens and you lose a signal or your controller dies or whatever happens it'll start flying back and without front sensors it's just gonna hit the first thing that it could possibly run into but this has a much higher chance of making it back alive so I love that and I guess when it comes to things I don't love I mean I guess it would be nice if it had side sensors oh I know my least favorite thing is the fact that I can't take it off of HDR but that that could be a pretty straightforward fix in firmware but for now just hopping it into 48 frames per second has been fine for me oh and this controller that's propping up the camera right now it's so cool that we have an affordable smart controller I mean like I said the RC Pro is 1200 bucks the smart controller I think I spent like $800 on it once you start flying with a remote that has a screen built into I'm telling you, you will not be able to go back to taking that phone and shoving it in there and the clamp and taking the cable and oh they're still trying to figure out exactly which drones they're going to try to make this compatible with so hopefully they open this up to a lot of the other drones like the air oh one other thing I don't love about this is that this can only be controlled with two controllers so there's this one and also the RCN1 but if you invested a bunch of money in the smart controller or the RC Pro and unfortunately you can't use this yet but maybe that's something that's coming in a firm again i'm going to update all that stuff down there in the comments but overall man this thing 
is dope. And this video is getting too long and I'm getting cold, so I'm gonna have to go now. <laughs> Does that look convincing? I was flying it myself like back here. <laughs> By the way, don't do this at home. I had a friend that got stitches from the Mavic Pro. So, you know, this is dangerous. Don't do that. Anyway.